Ya YouTubers, Tazman here bringing you another episode of Fantasy Grounds Unity from the ground up. And uh, in our last episode, we talked about how to get Fantasy Grounds, how to get it installed and kind of configured on your system the way you want it. We even launched Fantasy Grounds, got to where we are right now, talked a little bit about the library uh, because it's very important. This is where all the modules that we may or may not have well, I guess it wouldn't be the ones we don't have. Only the modules that we do have will be available here. Um, and we talked about the different types of button layouts and stuff like that. We will get into more detail on all that stuff. Um, but in this episode, we are going to focus in on the left side of the screen here. And the bread and butter of Fantasy Grounds, if you ask me, there's, there's kind of three main breads and butters I guess and that would be the chat window the combat tracker which we haven't gone over and the party sheet these are probably three of the most useful most cool things that uh, fantasy grounds over other other online virtual tables uh, have to offer so we're gonna start out by talking about the chat box here and the first thing we want to talk about is in fantasy grounds in general anything you want to do uh, the right click is your friend if I right click on the desktop here you can see I have an option to exit the program uh, by the way one of my new favorite features is minimize <laughs> that was not in the previous version you can maximize and then you could restore a window because when you maximize this whole bar went away and then you'd have to right click and say restore window but look we can minimize we don't have to drag the window off somewhere else to see what was behind it to me that's awesome <laughs> so here's what I want to talk about with this chat box so if we right click on it you can see we have an option to unlock the position we have an option to clear it we have a prompt icon and we have the halt icon so these are basically just little things that you can, you know, prompt, halt. Oh, it even made a sound. Interesting. Usually I don't have any sound in my, my Fantasy Grounds. However, this does have sounds automatically. So, um, and then of course we can clear the icon. This one right here is the unlock position. Right now if I left click on it, it doesn't do anything. If I hold, if I click that, now if I left click in it, now I can move it wherever I want. I can change the size. It looked like it kind of made a, a snappy thing, but I guess it didn't. Uh, I can change the size. One thing to note about sizing in Fantasy Grounds, with all windows within Fantasy Grounds, you can size them from the left, or the, yeah, the Hold on, I'm not thinking straight. You can do it from the right side. You can do it from the bottom. You can do it from the corner down here. And I don't even think you can do it from the upper corner. So basically, I cannot size it from here, 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 here. I can only do here. So if I wanna make it smaller, I would make it smaller. It does have a minimum minimal size, which is that right there. Um, but, uh, that, oh, that's the line I was looking at. I don't know what that line is. That might be an undocumented feature because may, maybe it's because I went off the screen just slightly. I don't know. Uh, so anyway, you can change the size, uh, not the size, but you can change, yes, the size. <laughs> you can change the size of this, this, uh, chat box. Now I showed in the last episode that we can also do uh, fonts which is really cool we will definitely get more into those a little later but uh, we're gonna go and lock this guy down right now so now once again he can't move so the thing you can do in the chat box obviously you can chat you can say hello and it will say you know everyone that's chatting will be able to see what you're saying for example we went over to the uh, player screen you can see it says the GM says hello as the player I could say hi there and you'll see Tasman says hi there 
So if we go back to the GM screen, whoop, this one, uh, you can see the Tasman set it. So some other things you can do with the GM screen is you can actually take these dice. Now let's just take a moment and talk about these dice. Um, so you can left click on a die and if you click it quick it just rolls it. Now you'll notice nothing happened. It didn't tell us what it was. If I left click and hold it and drop it in this window it actually will tell me information about that die. What is that line from? Is that from? Yes it is. Let's get to a nice spot where we don't have the ugly lines. There we go. Now we we'll relock it. Uh, actually I want to this a little lower there we go now let's lock it so like I said this is early access uh, it's beta so lots of things might change uh, definitely bugs will be squashed and the performance will be improved so as you can see here with the d4 I rolled a 1 and you can see it on the die right here and then this is the total the reason it's giving you the total is for example if I rolled two D4s and I do that by left clicking and while holding the left click I hit the right button. So if I come in here and roll that now you'll see I rolled a one, a three, and a two and it automatically adds those all up. So here it will tell me I rolled three D4 right and I got six. You'll also notice here that GM is showing a little eyeball with a line through it. This means this is not visible to players. So if we went and looked at our player screen real quick, you'll see that there was no there, there was no dice rolled. No, I didn't see anything. In fact, uh, I'm not sure. Oh, I need to click up here. Let's do this real quick. Oh, I don't know if I I have to do it the other way. <laughs> we have to have this one behind. But I'm going to take the GM one so we can actually see what's happening in the player one. So if I pick up, say, the six-sided dice and right-click three times, roll that, they will see that something was rolled, which will scare them to death, which is great, but they won't get to see any of the results. Now, there is a way that you can make it so that they can see your results, um, and we'll, we'll get into that shortly. So uh, that's just what I wanted to show right there real quick. So now if we close this back up, line it back up there. Um, now one of the really cool things about the Unity version of, of Fantasy Grounds is it used to be that you could simply do this. You'd say die for dice, not kill. Uh, you would say D, uh, die, and then you would do something like 2D20. And bam, it would roll two 20-sided dice, right? And then it would give you the results. I rolled a four and a two, that's six. However, with the new version, they've done lots of cool stuff. Uh, stuff that I love that you can actually do more intelligent stuff. For example, we could do simple math here. Uh, we could always go die and we could say three times two. And you'll see that it simply said six. It didn't roll any die because we didn't tell it a D. We didn't so that when we did it before where we did two D twenty, that's two D is dice twenty. So that's how many sides. So it's two twenty sided dice, right? So you could do some math like that. Uh, you know, you could say it, it instead of pulling up a calculator as DM you can or GM you can actually do it in here you can say oh wait so they just got uh, they took so they're at 40 and they just took 18 damage so you can do that and you can see oh whoops I forgot to do the die command everyone saw that die and you'll see that it it calculates it for you and you can do I believe you can do some pretty complex stuff then you can say plus you know uh, five and then times two. I hope I didn't do times times two and it, it knows how to do all that basic math which is really cool the other thing you can do is you can actually kinda do stuff like that where you are saying something along the lines of this because it's math and you're adding it with 
a dice command. So you might say something like three times two and then dice 20, right? Or we could say d6, you know, two, two d We're actually rolling three times two, which is six d6. And there you go. You can see that it says 66. Now, I'm kind of curious. I want to try something. This just made me think of something. What if we did something like die and we said like uh, 1d4 times 2 and then say d6. I don't know that this is going to work, but it would be cool if it did. So what in theory this should do is it'll roll a 1d4. Let's say it rolls a 2. That'll go 2 times 2 which is 4 and then it will roll 4d6. So this, like I said, this will be cool if this works. I'm not 100% sure it will. No, it doesn't look like it did. In fact, I don't know what it did because it turned it kind of gray and it didn't even roll the d6 and it got a zero. So <laughs> yeah, that didn't work, but that would be kind of cool because you could kind of generate random numbers from that. Uh, the next thing I wanted to show is, uh, let's say, um, with, with disadvantage. So disadvantage is something in 5e. And what it does, if I click this disadvantage button down here, and then I roll the 20-sided dice, it actually rolls two of them. And you'll see that it actually drops the higher the two. So I rolled a 15 and a 9 because it's disadvantage I keep the 9 you can do this also uh, all by yourself we could actually say let me see if I can figure this out I think it would be uh, I think you'd say 2d20 whoops 2d20 and we want to keep the lowest right so we do keep lowest so KL I don't think you need to say one because one is just the default if I wanted to keep the lowest two that would keep both of them but let's see if this works we just rolled two and we added them together okay that did not work quite right so uh, K oh oh I think let me just think for a second 2d20 keep lowest one let's try that okay that did work I mean it didn't color it or anything because that's kind of a feature of the rule set for this but as you can see it does kind of show you the two that were rolled a little better and it shows you the lowest now the other thing you can do is keep the highest and all you have to do is get rid of the L in keep lowest so if we do 2d 20k1 this should keep the highest of the uh, 2d20s and there you go we got a 15 and 10 it kept the 15 so this is the exact same thing as clicking advantage rolling with advantage and there you go so we rolled a 2 and a 15 we get to keep the 15 the nice thing about the advantage disadvantage is it also colors it so you know uh, this is actually disadvantage visually really quick I mean you can see it here disadvantage drop the 15 advantage drop the 2 so that's that's good too the other thing you can do for example and I'm going to maybe copy this one from my notepad is you can also have it do compounding now if you don't know what compounding is compounding basically says if I roll a six on a six sided dice for example so as we can see here it says die it says 2d6 bang which is the exclamation point which says if I roll a six uh, on either of these 2d6 I roll uh, I re-roll that six I keep the previous six but I re-roll it and then it's also here saying also I'm gonna do the same thing with 2d4 I'm going to roll a 2d2 two four-sided dice with the bang at the end means I'm going to compound it. So hopefully one of these two max out. If not, we will have to do this a couple times. Nope, none of them maxed out because we got a two, three, and a three, and a one. Let's try it again. 
Nope, a five and a four. Come on, give me a max. Oh, there we go. So here you can see uh, that we rolled a two and a four, and then we rolled, I believe, a one, because that would be the four plus one is that. And it'll keep on doing that as long as I roll. Um, in fact, let's see, there's an odds that we might get to see at popcorn a lot if we said like 10 D6. So I see at least one, two, there's another one, there's another one, and that's it. So it does show you that, you know, we know that this was at least a six, uh, and then the second roll was probably a two, right? This was a six, we rolled it a second time, we got another six, which means the third time we rolled it, we got a one. Hopefully that makes sense. But you can actually set up compounding by using the exclamation point, or if you know Linux and stuff, it's also known as the bang. The other thing you can do that's really handy is you can actually do custom dice. For example, if we wanted to flip a coin, which would be a two-sided dice, we could do die, and we could say 2d1. Um, no, that's a one-sided, 2d2. So we're gonna roll two, or we're gonna flip two coins basically. So here you can see, even though it says five, um, it looks at it more as either a one or a two. And I believe the way it works is odds will be one, evens would be two. So if we roll this again, maybe we'll be able to see the two. So we got a five and a two, and you'll see we got a one and a two. So that would maybe be the five, that would be the two. Let's try again and see if we get accurate. Five and a four, so it's a two and a two. So actually that's not accurate. Maybe what it's actually doing then is saying one, two, three is a one or a two. <laughs> three, four, five, or four, five, six is a two. I'm not 100% sure how it does it with the pictures. Um, but you can use this for that type of thing where I'm just saying roll a d2. I'm just flipping a coin basically. So that's a two. Uh, that's a two. That's a one. So ignore what the die actually says. I don't know the logic behind it. But the nice thing is you can actually do things like, for example, let's say, um, uh, what's a good example? Let's say I have five party members. And as the DM, I'm like, well, I don't, I don't want to biasly attack one of them. So if I have five party members, I would assign them one, two, three, four, five in my head, and then I would say uh, one d, uh, whoops, five, one d five, like that. So it's one five-sided die. It rolls, and with various ones, it doesn't even have the die, and all. I, I believe I can explain that in just a moment. But as you can see on the die, it just draws a circle and it says I rolled a four. So if I had some custom, say like a 30 side, I could do that and look at that, I rolled a four twice in a row. But as you can see, it's not always a four. <laughs> so uh, let's see, so that is the custom die. The other one I wanted to point out is you can combine them. So for example, we talked about compounding, where if it rolls a six, it re-rolls another six. Um, and then we could say keep the highest, right? So for example, here we're saying roll 2d6, re-roll sixes, or re-roll the max. It's not really saying a six specifically, because if I said re, uh, 2d8, for example, it would re-roll eights. And then we're saying keep the highest one. Remember that it was KL for keep lowest and just K for keep highest. So if we do that, we can see it does both of them. And it, that was perfect. It actually re-rolled the 8 for us, gave us a 10. So we rolled a 1, an 8, and then a 2. That was actually the perfect example right there. Uh, and we can also combine other types of things. We can do math. And another thing I wanted to show here is called exploding dice. So um, exploding dice is... Why am I drawing a blank? Exploding dice is basically um, where you're re-rolling a specific number. So for example here, we're saying 
3d6 exploding so that means actually hold on I don't remember why I wrote this uh, let me think just for a second let me go check my other notes real quick I gotta find them real quick um, Oh, let's see, where did I put that? I, I wrote real truncated notes. So basically, okay, so what this is going to do is um, it will roll a 3d6, and if it's maxed, because we did exploding earlier, didn't, no, that was the compounding, so exploding means that uh, it will do do do. This is funny because this is what I I'm going to be using in a, an example in just a minute. So so it rolls three d six. If the max is rolled, then append another d six to the roll, and it'll just keep repeating. But that isn't that kind of like the compounding. It's a lot like compounding, isn't it? Let, let's do this. So we should roll a 3d6. If we get a 6, it will explode it, meaning it gets to go again. And a 2d4, if one of those uh, hits 4, it will explode as well. But that kind of seems... Isn't that kind of what compounding was? Well, we got one. Oh, we got another one and another one. So, actually, maybe the difference is we keep, why did we get a negative 5 from all that? Oh, because we did subtraction. So we were taking these numbers here, subtracting these numbers, and because these exploded, now this is kind of interesting because I wonder if we did that with Bane, with the... Um, what it would do with the bang because it kind of sounds like it's the same but I know I use exploding for an example in a minute because you can say which number it explodes on that didn't help I need you to explode on me there we go so yeah I kind of did the same thing two and seven nine four three it did the same thing, however, um, this one actually draws it out more, which is fine. All right, so there's that. Um, we also have, we, we talked about the keep highest, keep lowest. Um, we also have a drop one. So this is going to use a little bit of math and a drop so D will tell it to drop not this first D so this is once again this is that math from our very first example we have 3 times 2 D6 which is up to well that will be 6 D6 and then we're dropping the two lowest so we're actually dropping two of the lowest values or the dice so if we hit enter on this you'll see it rolls them and you'll see we rolled a 5, a 5, a 5, a 6, a 2, and a 4. 2 and 4 were the lowest, so they were excluded from the total. Now, one area this becomes very handy is, for example, one of the ways to roll attributes in the game is you would pick up a die. You'd pick up four six-sided dice. You would roll them, and you drop the lowest. So this would not actually be 13. This would be 5 and 4, which is 9, 10, 11 right so this attribute would be 11 so we can actually have it visually show us that by saying die 4d6 e or no d <laughs> and drop the lowest right I don't have to have yeah I don't need an I don't think I need we'll just put the number there in case so here you can see I do the same thing however this time it actually automatically does that for me now there is kind of an order of operations. This does seem to go from left to right and just work its way down the, the chain. Um, 
So let's say I'm a really nice GM and I say, you know, you don't, you, you can reroll ones. So what I would do here is I would say, oh, we haven't gone over that yet. We're not going to do that just yet. We're, we're going to show the next one. <laughs> and then I'll show you that because uh, we haven't gone over reroll yet. So the next thing we're going to talk about, obviously, is reroll. And this is going to be an example that shows us rerolling. Oops, I didn't need to get that part too. Uh, this is this is going to show us rerolling and exploding. So what this is going to do is it's going to roll two eight-sided dice. It's going to reroll anything that I believe is two. I don't know if it's lower. Do do do. Um. Yeah, two or less, so it'll reroll ones and twos, and it will explode uh, if anything greater than seven is. Uh, yeah, so if a seven or eight is rolled, it'll explode. So let's go ahead and run that, and hopefully we get. Oh, there's an eight, so that's good. So there you go. So now we got the eight. The two was dropped because it was the lowest, and then the well, that was the second roll, right? So if we look, we didn't get one there. Didn't get one there, Crete. Oh, we got one there because we got... Uh, okay, so here you can see we got the... S wait a minute, is that right? 2d8, roll, reroll 2, explode 7 and higher. So there's 5 and 4. I can't tell what that one was. Or is it 8 and higher? 5 and 4 is 9. There we go. So there's a 7 that re-rolled. It doesn't, it doesn't show you all this stuff, and you have to pay attention to the dice. So we did see a 7. I think it re-rolled to a 4. <laughs> I'm not sure. But anyway... Now that we've talked about reroll, which was just an R, the other thing we can do is if we go look at right here where 46, um, what we can say is, for example, we're going to roll 46. I reroll ones, and then if, and then we want to keep the lowest one, or no, we want to drop the lowest. So we want to say, uh, keep low yeah we want to drop so we want to say d1 I think that's what we need to say we're re-rolling ones and then we're dropping the lowest one let's see if that works so let's see five four four two yep that's good all right let's see come on roll me a one no one rolled me a one I'm not getting lucky give me a one really come on there's a one so as you can see, it re-rolled that one, got rid of it, but the one, the one that it re-rolled was a three, which is still the lowest, so it actually kept that. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, I'll put my little notes that I have. This is my notes in Notepad++. Um, if you want to pause the screen here and look at it or whatever, that is fine. I'm going to move it back off and we're going to continue because we're at 28 minutes. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about, so we kind of talked about this. What this guy right here is, is these are some preset modifiers, and I guess buffs and debuffs might be a good way of calling it, and then there's the custom modifier. So let's say, for example, I do damage 1d6 plus 5 because I have a, I'm, I'm pretty darn strong. So I could click this little 5 here, and then if I roll a 6, you'll see it did d6 plus 5 and does 7. I could also say, oh, well, I'm super weak, uh, so I really shouldn't be using my strength. I should be using something else. And you'll see here I actually got a negative 2, which obviously is going to be a miss. The other thing you can do is, for example, let's say I, I hulk out, you know, and turn into some monster beast. I could actually say uh, plus 10, right? Uh, and roll that and now you'll see 4 plus 10 I get 14 so that would be damage I can also do that for example let's say I'm a stealthy person 
or maybe I'm not a stealthy person, maybe I'm actually not very stealthy at all, I could actually say negative uh, 5, and you'll see that it shows negative 5 there. Then I roll the d20, and for example, let's say in order to go invisible, I have to get a 15 or higher. So I rolled a 7, minus 5, leaves me with 2, or no, no, I rolled a, oh no, I rolled a 2, <laughs> and then minus the 5, I get negative 3. So these are the dice. Um, really quick, we're, we're right at the time I, I like to continue uh, to end. Uh, but let's go over one last thing about the dice, and then I think we will be kind of done with this uh, section. So with the dice, we already talked about how you can pick them up. You can right-click on it. And while I talk, I'm just going to keep right-clicking. I have not found an actual number of times that you can do this. Um, I believe, like I've lined this kind of up to the center of the dragon picture here, the Smiteworks dragon guy, and just did this forever. Um, and it used to be like with the previous version, uh, Fantasy Grounds Classic, after about 60, right clicking would no longer add dice here. However, as you can see, it's just still going, and I'm pretty sure we've got over 60 here. But uh, we're just going to keep going just for, a, just for another maybe round. Okay, at the end of this round, we'll go ahead and call it good. Um, but as you can probably hear me clicking. There we go. So I'm going to drag that onto the chat box. And boom, look at all those dice. So now it's going to take a minute to calculate because that was a lot of dice. But once it's done, they'll fade away and you'll see that we rolled a 657 and we rolled 270 dice so i don't know that there's an actual limit however you might not always want to you know pick up the dice and do that so many times they do have other options if you right click on a die you actually have options of here's just picking up two of them picking up three five ten fifteen and twenty you can't really see the ten because it's down below but it's ten so like if I wanted 20 of these dice, now you can see I have 20. Now I could still right click and there's 21 and then I'll go in here. It'll calculate it really quick and you'll see 21. The six sided dice here, you can actually choose the same ones, but then you have this one called custom die. Now, or custom dice. I'm thinking at some point they might allow you to customize this, but if I click on that with left click, now you can see I have a D3, a D2, and a D0. A D0 makes absolutely no sense to me because, you know, if I click on that and I roll it, no matter what I roll, I'm going to get zero. So I'm thinking they probably will make this so that you can actually customize it. Uh, the D2 would be flipping a coin. D3, I don't know, a D3 is a really funky die. I know they have them actually too. Uh, so there you go, it's a three. So when you roll a custom die that actually rolls, and this is part of the reason when we were flipping a coin or whatever, um, it was showing a die because there's actually coding for the D2 where when we did D5, there wasn't coding for that, so it didn't actually roll a die. But you have that option with the D6. Uh, with the D8, once again, you have the 2 through 20. Um, with the D10, you have one other option. You have this percentile. And the way that works is if we click that, you'll actually see it grabs two die. One of them has just single digit. The other one has double digits. So if I roll that, the double digit represents the tens position and the single digit represented the ones position. So we got 96. The only caveat to that is a double zero and a single zero. So a double zero on the double digit die and a single zero on the single digit die is 100 instead of being a zero. Um, and then there is no zero. The next die is the 12-sided die. Once again, it has the same things as all the other ones, other than the 6 and the 10. And then we have the 20-sided die, which also does the same thing, where we could 
roll 20 of those bad boys all at once. And you'll see we rolled 20 d20 and we got 120. Once again, you can always do it this way. So for example, when you get a higher level wizard uh, or a fireball spell, you end up rolling like 40 d6. So you would say, you know, you could right click on this 40 times or you could simply come in here and say 40 d6. And roll it that way, which is a bit easier. And then you could see I just did 144 damage to everyone in that, that, that fireball. So um, I think this is a good stopping point for now. Hopefully you learned a lot. Hopefully uh, you enjoyed it. You'll notice that none of these rolls have been showing up here. And in the next episode, I think we will talk about how to uh, customize that so that you can actually have things show up there. Uh, and we'll start talking about these little buttons right here, specifically this one to start with which is our options, which is where you actually can change the, who, who can see the dice and how they see them. So thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to leave a thumbs up down below. Aside from that, comment, like, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. Check out my Discord and my other channels. And don't forget about my great big game giveaway. When I hit 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, I'm giving away 57 Steam games. That averages out to be one out of every 20 subs will get a game. And that's it. Until next time, I'll be seeing you later. Bye.